Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Ruth, and I'm a member of Christ Central. This morning's devotion will be taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 18 to 24, which I will now read from the NIV Bible. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that whose those who heard it begged that no further words be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. If, which was, if any animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven you have come to god the judge of all to the spirit of the righteous made perfect to jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of abel that is the reading um, from god's word I I think if you have um, read this yourself or listened as I read it, um, you will note the notion of mountains being very prevalent in these verses. Um, mountains in the Bible are very significant um, for a range of reasons. Um, and in the Bible, we read that many events took place um, on the mountain. For example, Abraham sacrificed Isaac on the mountain. Um, prophet Elijah um, challenged the prophets of Baal on the mountaintop. Jesus preached a sermon on a mountain. Um, and whilst he was fasting in the wilderness, he was taken up to a mountaintop as well, um, where he faced one of his temptations. Um, and finally, the Great Commission was made uh, or issued on the mountaintop. So the mountain is quite a significant um, place in the Bible um, and one could go into details about the significance etc but um, that's probably for another day but with these verses um, Paul was making reference in the first um, part of it to a mountain he didn't tell us what the mountain was as such but due to the the, the text he used um, and the explanation he provided we can infer that he was referring to Mount Sinai. Um, and Mount Sinai was very significant because it was on that mountain that the Old Testament was established and founded. Um, it was on that mountain that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. Um, and we read in the Old Testament in the book of Exodus that it was such a holy mountain um, and it had the presence of God around it that humans and animals couldn't even touch the mountain um, and any you know should they touch it it would result in death um, exodus chapter 20 especially verse 18 explains how intimidating the the, the presence of god was um, on that mountain top and how scary it must have been actually for the people who were present right there close to that mountain um, and in Exodus 20, it explains that on the mountain, there was thunder and lightning flashes and that the mountain was smoking um, and that the people actually feared for their lives. Can you imagine standing in front of a mountain um, and it's just smoke and fire and thunder? Um, I, could, I was thinking possibly our human understanding right now would be similar to watching a, a, volcano, a volcano erupt as such, um, but I probably think that's very minute compared to the reality of what they were looking at. Um, it was so scary that Moses said he was trembling with fear, um, and I imagine that it was because, first of all, the top of the mountain was burning with fire, um, there was darkness um, around this, just as um, Paul stated and explained, and it's also explained in the book of Exodus. Um, and it was just a very scary visual image. To top that up as well, 
Um, there was, um, you know, noises coming out of from the mountaintop, trumpets being blasted, and a voice was speaking words. And it was the words that was being spoken um, was quite, um, I guess, strong that um, people were really afraid. And I, it made me wonder whether it was a warning that was being said to the people or, or, or the fact that, you know, they were just, the noise reminded them of maybe the, their sin um, and their fear. And when I thought about um, all of the reasonings around why the people were scared um, of the mountain or of the voice of God as such, or, or the thunder that was um, on top of the mountaintop and the fire, um, it was, I was able to draw up my conclusion was that um, in the moment when they were close to the mountain, the people were reminded of their sins and they were very aware of it because they were standing next to something so holy um, and they were reminded of it. And um, they were also reminded that their sins prevented them from having a relationship with God and their sins brought death. That was the price of their sins. You know, sin was just death and death had a hold on them. In the second part of the reading, Paul makes a comparison to another mountain, Mount Zion, which is his explanation is very different compared to Mount Sinai. So unlike Mount Sinai, where the people and animals couldn't come close to the mountain, um, which signifies, you know, a lack of relationship as such. On Mount Zion, um, the people could draw near to the mountain. Um, you know, on this mountain, Mount Zion, they were not afraid for their lives. Um, they could have a relationship with God um, and they were made perfect because of Jesus, which is because they were made perfect because of Jesus, who was, you know, he's our brother, he's our friend, he's our mediator. Um, and he is, um, he came to this world to die for our sins. And right now it's mediating um, on our behalf. And in comparison to Mount Sinai, where there were lots of noise and fear and smoke, on this mountain, Mount Zion, um, there are thousands and thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Um, and I like that he used the word joyful, which is not a word that was used um, when discussing, when in his narrative about Mount Sinai. Um, but on Mount Zion, there's joyful assembly. Um, and he talks about the church um, and the firstborns, which is any one part of the church, um, you know, being their names being written in heaven. Um, and it, it's just a real good, I guess, explanation between the old covenant and the new covenant. And the fact that under the new covenant, um, we no longer have to be um, afraid of death or afraid of God. Um, and, you know, while he is very holy and, you know, we are human beings born into sin, but because of Jesus, when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin. He sees us as perfect. Um, and the verses basically just ep epitomize the journey in our relationship with God from a place of fear to a place of joy. Um, and, yeah, and I guess the takeaway from this is to remember how far you've come in your life as well. Um, there was a time where you would have probably, you and I had been in places where um, the fear ruled our lives, but because of Jesus, we no longer have to have fear and we can trust God with our future. And whilst, you know, in the old Mount Sinai, there was um, lack of relationship with God, the people couldn't draw near to him. They couldn't have a relationship just to touch the mountain alone could result in their death. We are now under the new covenant and we can draw near to God. We can touch that mountain. We can touch his feet. We can come close to him as we are um, and bring all of ourselves, the good, bad, the ugly to him, knowing and trusting that he'll restore us. Um, that's it for me today. Um, and I hope you have a good day today.